Your heart has been broken. But I want you to know this. Everybody plays the fool. Mint ingredient, or main ingredient, that was the jam many, 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 many years ago. But the message remains the same. Good afternoon, everyone. Dolores Jones is my name. I am your comeback coach. I hope that you take a little bit of time and sit on down and let's have this conversation. While you're doing that, go ahead over to the YouTube station and uh, find Dolores Jones TV. Hey, Miss Yolanda. Go ahead and subscribe and uh, hit that notification button. All right, we got a lot of things we need to get into. Hey, Winona. Uh, so anyway, call your girlfriend talking about, girl, listen, Dolores is on there talking about, so your heart broken. What do you do? First of all, don't panic. You know, love can be a very interesting thing depending upon how we identify love, how we define love, what we expect from love. Um, some people say love is a gamble. Some people say love is a game. Uh, some of the calls that I've been on recently uh, focusing on the, the key to effective communication says that love is an intent. So it's also a choice. Love is a choice. It's something you choose to do or something you don't choose to do. I don't care how much you say you love a person. There's no guarantee that that person is going to love you back. I mean, we can say I love you, but at the end of the day, it's what you show me. And you don't have to be from the show me state. It's just simply these are the facts. So I want to hit something real quick called So You're Heartbroken. Everybody plays the fool. But here's the key. People play the fool but you don't have to stay a fool. Let's focus on that mostly. Let's get that out of the way. Everybody plays the fool. Because a lot of us want to see the best in everyone. And then for some of us, we see a red flag or a green, no, not green, but a red flag, even a yellow flag that says, hold on for a second. And because we've already said these words, I love you. Now we hold ourselves accountable. Because what we're saying is, I mean what I say. But does a person deserve what you're going to do? Chances are, if you look at your life, no. Love is an intent. I think the best way to say this that I, I'm learning with a group of people is those of you that have children. You say you love your children. Now, you know your kids are kids. So there's a big chance they're going to do something really silly. Uh, you want to put them out. And in some cases you do. I'm all for that. If they don't want to respect you, you got to go. But at the end of the day, in spite of that, you are going to love that child. Why? Because you're intending to. You, you make a decision because that is your child. At the end of the day, you look at it. You realize that you are a lot more mature than they are. You are the parents. But you show your love no matter what. Now, can you take that same approach when it comes to actual love relationships? Hello, Lynn. It just depends. It depends on what it is you're really after. It depends on what you see love at is. A lot of us should know what love is not. Love is not a fist in your mouth. You do understand that, right? Okay. Love is not somebody coming home giving you an STD over and over again. That's that's not true. Love is not somebody consistently lying to you. You're always crying. You feel like you're dying and you're heartbroken. Well, here's the thing. Do you want to stay that way? Sometimes you just want that man just because. Sometimes. And listen, ladies, some of us are heartbreakers too. Some of us are heartbreakers. Some of us are heartbreakers. And we have to own that. I'll share an example I shared with a lady uh, most recently. We had a great conversation. I love having conversations. And I'm going to tell you right now, once you accept that pain is real and you don't ever, ever, ever want to feel that way, it's very difficult for you to want to allow other people to stay that way. Can I talk to real people? Now, this is if you really have the love of the Lord and you've learned what it means to love yourself. Because you can't just give this out. I can't give you anything I don't have. But once I have it, let me share it with you. So that's what I'm going to do today. So, you've been heartbroken. 
Everybody plays a fool. Just don't say a fool. Pastor Cofield, I love you, girl. I didn't see you last night, but I saw this sparkling dress at Julian Bond's 40th birthday. I must have been on the other side of the room. But anyway, he was looking gorgeous, darling, gorgeous. Love is an intent. Sometimes you have to choose love for the greater good. Right? Okay. So this goes beyond feeling. But sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. But when it comes to our children, we're choosing love for the greater good. But if you're in a relationship with a grown person and the decisions and the choices and the behaviors they are displaying and you're not their parent and you know that this is a deadly situation that it can turn crazy real fast, then I challenge you to really think about that. Maybe you need just to say, I played the fool right here. And then look at it for what it's worth. What did you do? What did you allow? What did you say? What did you ignore to place yourself in that situation? What are you looking for? Now, ladies, listen, some of us are still broken. Because being broken doesn't just vanish overnight. Even if a person breaks their leg, they have to wear an awkward looking boot. They have to walk on crutches. And sometimes if it's not healing correctly, the doctor has to go back in there and break the bone and reset it. These things are very painful. So I want you to put that in a, a spiritual perspective. Maybe there's some spiritual bones that have been broken. And I heard, I saw this, this uh, quote and it says, God allowed my ex to come back in my life to see if I was still stupid. Because we can talk a good game. But it's when the rubber meets the road, honey. When he calls you, when he's smelling all good with Issy Miyake, or whatever your favorite is. It can be black. Whatever your favorite fragrance is. Fragrance is. He has it all up in your nostrils. The question is, can you stick to what you know? We have selective amnesia. Y'all know that, right? Because when we're banking on something, and some of us has gone as far as to order the wedding cake, Invite the family. Then we say, what are we going to tell them? We're going to tell them you changed your mind. I know that's hard. Man, I invest this on the baby. Listen, this is your life we're talking about. I don't care if you spend $10,000. Is your happiness worth more than $10,000? Some of us be tripping. He owed me $100. Girl, you better let that go. That's $25 full time. That's it. You won't get that back. What you won't get back is 25 years of your life. So you play the fool. Accept that. Say, I missed it. It was gas. I thought it was God. I thought it was faith. I was playing a fool. It does take time to, to see a person. But there are fundamental things that by the time you've matured in a certain area, you just call it out. That's what your grandmother and them do, right? They go, uh-uh, no, that's us. She's not the one. Hey, well, what are you talking about? Your grandma, your grandmother, your uncle, your auntie, they've been here longer. They've had more experience. They have something what T.D. Jakes calls instinct. See, he and his son were in Africa, and he had the man on the truck, the tour guide, was telling them about the elephant. But the man who knew about the element, elephant, because that was his element, the man with the instinct, was sitting on the front of the truck with a gun. And as they were talking, the man says, the elephant. Because he was in his elephant and he had a certain instinct about it. So you can be intelligent, but that doesn't mean that if you don't, that doesn't mean that, you know, it works all the time. You want wisdom. Wisdom to know what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and when not to do it. And we, we know it, but for whatever reason, we choose to ignore it. The question is, are you going to look up and you're 70 years old and you're still playing the fool? Are you going to look up and you 49 and you're still playing the fool because you wanted to get oh yeah it's, it, it has to get better who says it has to get better and here don't wait around for for the person to come back and say i'm so sorry how i treated you that's not the point the point is you recognize how the person treated you and you decide what you're going to do as a result of it if they never ever 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 call you and say i'm sorry Okay. You get to decide based upon what you have experienced 
what you're going to do about the heartache and the heartbreak. Are you going to put it on the altar? Are you going to just come clean and say, God, I'm just broken. I'm a hot mess, and this is why. Maybe I was dropped as a child. Maybe I was molested. Therefore, I see, I have a warped view of, of, of uh, sex and, and love. And, and people say, Lawrence, I like how you talk. See, I experienced that. I went 30 years without even talking about molestation. Because sometimes you don't know that you've been molested until somebody shows you what it is. And the person that did me that way was my babysitter. He was a male babysitter. And you know, kids, y'all love, we love hard. I don't care who it is. You just love them. Because that's in your nature is to love. And I thought, you know, I didn't like people mistreating him. And so when, when my brothers and sister, they would just play outside and he would take me upstairs. You know, I'm just thinking he just want to spend time with me. And then because I already said I loved him, I didn't want anybody to hurt him. So I was loyal. I was loyal to a fault. You ever been like that? You've been loyal to a fault? Mm -hmm. You've been loyal to a fault. Some of us are, are, are committed to dead things. Loyal to a fault. Well, I don't want nobody to ever hurt me. I'm not going to hurt him how they hurt me. Baby, if somebody's hurting you, you need to get up and go. I know, ladies, we try to be so nice. Some of us need to go straight gangster. I know you got the Holy Ghost, but there are days you need to go straight gangster. Like, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who you talking to? I love Jesus. I'm not Jesus. Try Jesus. He gonna save your soul. You try me, you gonna get cut in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's just where it is. Because think about when you sat there with that broken heart and how long it took you to get yourself back together again. Hello? And if it took you several months to get your mind back and then this person just pops up out of nowhere, you mean to tell me that you just gonna be like, okay. When we don't know who we are, we don't know whose we are, we will fall prey to that thing every time. I thank God that at this point in my life, once I see it, I'm better at recognizing it and doing something about it. If I allow myself to go into it, I have to own it. I have to say, look here, young man, uh, I thought, well, I was thinking, but we weren't talking. So therefore, I missed it. So I'm not getting ready to get mad at you because I didn't demand or I did not open the conversation. It's like, if you don't open a book, you're not going to pass the test. You don't get this by osmosis. You get this through revelation. You get this through experience. You get this through honesty. It's called life. And if you think for one minute that a man would cheat on a Halle Berry, cheat on a Janet Jackson, cheat on... You think about everybody you think you admire and you hear their heartache. Do you think for one minute not gonna happen to you now i wish we lived in a perfect world and i wish like back in the day you know you could fall in love with that one and y'all look up and it's 70 years of marriage and you know y'all work through a few things but nowadays it don't work like that sometimes you can get right down to the altar or the wedding day and i read it in a book it's called uh, think bigger the young lady's name is marshall evans daniels she she is married now to jack a daniels and honey Marshawn, Marsh listen, six figures, doing her thing, met some man, and she thought he was the man of her dreams. She, I, I think she was a virgin. Because you sometimes you think, well, he ain't going to treat me like that because I'm a virgin. Girl, people, a dog will treat you any kind of way. A dog has no respect. A person. A dog is a dog. Except if you Bella Rose because I take her and get her nails done. But at the end of the day, Bella is still a dog. And she was ready. And honey, listen, her and the man have bought a house. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She was excited. And the day before the wedding, she gets a phone call from the man's former wife. And the former wife had pictures of herself in the new house. And she sent those pictures to Marshawn. Marshawn could not breathe. And here's the thing, he was flying in town and she had to go pick this man up at the airport. 
Can you imagine that? You're going to pick your fiance up, fiance up from the airport, and you just got pictures from his ex-wife that she was in your house. Marshawn went to pick him up at the airport, and she left him at the airport. And she just looked at him. She was heartbroken. This man had purchased her. Let's talk about one of the like a one of the big old nice SUVs. See, just because a person got money does not mean he's good for you. Okay, we start thinking about, well, girl, he got me a $50,000 ring and he bought me a $350,000 house. So what? As stupid is, stupid does. If he's a crook, he's a crook. He's just a rich crook. Okay, he's a pimp. Sometimes we used to pull pimps, but there's some rich pimps out there. Just don't let nobody pimp you. You got good sense. So Marshawn in her book, she was devastated. But y'all know what? It was too late to cancel the wedding. It was too late to cancel the reception. And the people found out. But guess what? Her friends still showed up. That's what I'm talking about. They turned it out and turned it up. And her best friend was right there to get her through that process. So if you were still planning to have a good time, don't just throw your good time away. Be grateful that you found out. Yes, you're going to cry. You're heartbroken. But let me tell y'all something. If you talk to Marshall, Marshawn Evans Daniels, who is now married to Jack A. Daniels, they're expecting triplets. Honey, she waited. She was broken. She was hurt. She was devastated. But when Jack A. Daniels found her, like the one, the man who did the work, the man who was willing to honor her, to respect her, Mar, 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 what did I say? Marshawn. She was already up and doing it. She had been on the show uh, Apprentice. Y'all remember that show? And Jack went all the way from Kansas City, Kansas to Atlanta, Georgia and found his queen. And he put a big ring on it. But most importantly, he sprinkled it with a lot of love and understanding and compassion. And now they are partners in this thing. And they're going around the world helping other people. You got to wake up. Be grateful for what you found out. Even if it was on, what, two days before your wedding or day of your wedding. You know that part in the ceremony they say, if there's anybody who feels that this couple should not be married, you need to speak now forever. Hold your peace. More of us need to start speaking up. No, Your Honor, he was with me last night. Now, some of us wouldn't be able to handle that. What, Heffa, why are you going to send me pictures of, of him in the house? And you would have got mad at the woman when the woman has a heart to look at you and say to you, I don't want you to go out like that. Y'all better recognize. Not everybody wants your man. Some of them glad he gone. But they see you doing you. And God gives them enough courage to say, call her. Just tell us something. And let it be her decision. But, but listen, listen, ladies, listen. It is possible that a man that you were with may be different for another woman. But it does not mean the nature of that man is totally different. Because there are going to be certain things that you can't change. You have to want to change that stuff. If you meet somebody and he's a... Lord have mercy, help me to be kind, Jesus. I need you to save me right now. Again. You meet somebody and... Say, for instance, he was an abusive type of person. He has an abusive spirit, right? That stuff don't just disappear. That person has to put it under check. And if you find that the person isn't checking it, you get to decide, are you going to hang around? For some of us, we've been through so much hell, even the sight, we out. I'm out, I'm out, bouncing, I'm bouncing. I had to tell somebody recently, I said, listen, don't tell me that I'm the one. Show me. Because what happens, ladies, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. We get in those situations, we hear somebody say, you're the one. What do we do? Uh, girl, get ready to go to my wedding. Because we want to hear that, right? We want somebody to say, we, we are the one. And so we start running with it, right? And then you hear the person say, we're going to build a life together. Next thing you know, y'all bump the booties, just breaking the backboards and all that other stuff. Now, you really think you done found somebody. Because he did that thing that way, right? And plus, he told you you the one. So I was talking to the person. I said, uh-uh. No, no, no. You don't get to tell me I'm the one. Don't say that to me again. 
Don't say that to me. There's certain things you cannot say to me anymore. Don't tell me I'm the one. Show me. Because then what happens is, ladies, some of us take it and we run with it. And then the guy say, dang, I just known you for like three weeks and you ready to get married. Well, he done told you you was the one in three weeks because some of us want that to be true. We run with it, don't we? I'm guilty of that. Mm -hmm. Girl here, I'm, this is going to be he hit. He hit. Some of us get excited. We get happy for each other. But, but it takes a courageous woman to change her mind. I don't care if you got a million likes on Facebook. And the president of the United States called you and said, congratulations. If it ain't right, it ain't right. You got to love yourself enough and accept the fact that God has the very best for you. But in order for you to get the very best that he has for you, you have to become the very best version of yourself. Because once you do that, once you do that and you know without a doubt that you are God's and, and, and he is yours, and what God has for you is not going to give you heartache and heartbreak and you're not going to have to compromise your standards. You're going to be cool. You're going to be like, player, bounce player. I don't care if he took him to the family reunion. I don't even care if he took you to meet his mama. If you find out that this joker ain't it, he ain't it. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes people are good people. They're just not ready for you. And you have to decide, are you going to stick around? Or you're going to get gone. But see, there's a point in your life, you ain't got time to stick around. If you almost 50, you ain't got time to stick around for certain things. You got to go. But it's your prerogative. If you accept it, don't you complain about it. Okay? If you decide, I'm going to accept this person the way they are. I see now that I'm going to have to put some more work in it. I see that it's going to cost me something. But sometimes you don't have anything left. Right? Sometimes you don't have anything left. And it doesn't mean that you're mean. It just means I can't sign up for this right now. Had you called me like 20 years ago? Possibly. But at 50, I don't give a dude. It's not personal. It's just, I just, I'm, on, I'm about something. But what happens when we're not about something, we have no clue what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, we just sitting around, you know, on the dock of the bay. Hey, Asa. Watching the tides roll away. And your friends want you to be happy, honey. But they don't want you to be hurt. And they definitely don't want you to be dead. Don't take a rocket scientist. We wish, you know, Lord, just let it be deep. Let it be so deep that um, I, I, I'm wrong about it. <laughs> you know, just hide it like, like they hide uh, Easter eggs. You know, we, won't, we don't want to see it up front. We want to go Easter egg hunting. Girl, please. You better go eat them eggs and go sit your tail down and say, oop, I missed it. And you ain't got to bad mouth the person. You ain't got to bad mouth them. You say, hey, girl, I saw you was on. So y'all was all on Facebook. And mm, girl, what happened to him? Girl, we just better off not together. What happened? I don't need to talk about it. Because you don't need to talk about it with everybody else. You want to talk about it with whomever you know is going to be there for you if you get mad. Now, if you have not invested a lot of your money, your time, and your vagina, uh, it's easier to walk away. But once you start putting your money out there, no, once you start putting your vagina out there, see, I've had to walk away and say, just keep the money. I don't care. Keep it. Keep it. Mariah Carey's out there. She done sued a man for $5 million for wasting her time. Five million. Now somebody says she shouldn't get the money. Why? Because she saw it going in. But she's saying to this man, I wasted this much of my time. I could have been on tour doing these types of tapes, these types of songs, making these types of experiences. And so I'm going to add it up. You're a billionaire. So you're going to have to give me five million dollars. Now do y'all think she should get that five million dollars? I'm thinking about that. Some of y'all waiting for five hundred dollars. She said $5 million. Mariah Carey is a millionaire. And she wants this billionaire to pay her $5 million for wasting her time. Right there, that's the topic right there. Should she be paying that $5 million? Somebody talk back to me. Should she? What'd you say, Asa? What'd you say, Marlon? What would happen if a man had to pay you $1,000 per year that he messed over you? Do you think you deserve that? when you could have gotten out so what Mariah said one year of my life is one year of my life is worth a million dollars sucker 
So what you're getting ready to do is go to that bank and you're going to give me a million dollars. I'm going to have to research the story to see if the man really had to give her a million dollars. How many reasons does it take for you to leave? All it does is take one. I was watching some show called Love and Basketball and some young woman was on the Yama and she was with, she, child please, she was with her husband and um, she just wanted to know how many women he had been with because she was going to determine if she was going to stay based upon the number of women he had been with. And he told her, I think he said five, come, been to, end up being over 20. And so Yama was talking to her and she says, why did it have to be five? Why, why isn't it just one? Two. She was devastated. And he, he said, I'm just, baby, I'm sorry. And, and how, how many does it take for you? This ain't no how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tussie roll. A one, a two, a three, a three relationships aren't like lollipops okay no relationships aren't like lollipops tussie roll lollipops how many licks does it take to get the stupid one a two a three three how about one he hit you in the face that's it right there Whoop, we're done I don't care if you pay for a facelift if you knock your face down <laughs> Lord have me peace. I don't know where this is coming from in my spirit. If he knocked your face off, why would you care if he paid to put it back on? Oh, yeah, I knocked your face off. So, baby, as long as I can put your face back on, let's try this again. Now, listen, I'm not bitter. I'm just better. That's just the truth. Better understanding, better way of seeing things, a better way of living my life, a better way of understanding my mistakes. That's what's up right there. Come on now. So, your heart's been broken. Remember this, everybody plays the fool. Just don't stay a fool. Get the lesson, learn, get your luggage. Be careful when somebody starts saying, hey, you can come and move in with me. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you Why? Why would you meet somebody instantly and then um, just move in with them? Somebody tell me, I'm waiting for y'all to comment because I'm trying to figure this out. You will win the Nobel Peace Prize if you can tell me why. You would immediately move in with somebody. Why? Because sometimes you're desperate. You ain't on top of your game. You want to still be independent. But like your grandma and them said, did your grandma say this or was it your cousin? Said, don't drop, jump out of the fire, out of the frying pan into the fire. It's getting hot in here. Keep all your clothes on. Grab your bags, your Gucci, whatever it is you got, honey, and, and get gone. So you had a bad day. Research people who've had a, mate, a bad day and got over it. That's why you need to share your story. Not from a place like I'm getting ready to cuss him out. I, mean, I first started doing my videos, I had to go and take some of them down. Hey, Rodney, I love you. So you had a, you had a heartache. You didn't die. Now, if you did and you came back from life, I don't even know if I want to talk to you right now. If you done, went to, you done died and came back to Facebook Live. Luminati, I don't know what you up with. Okay. Just be smarter. Just understand, your heart was broken, but you don't have to stay there. Your heart was broken. This is my final story of this particular video. I was talking to somebody and a person felt like a person did them wrong. Y'all lady, y'all know I'm coming from a lady's perspective because I'm a woman and that's what I do. But ladies, we hurt men too. So I was talking to the lady. And I said, now listen here, listen here, ladies. Y'all know the kind of guy that he's so nice that you can't stand him? Mm -hmm, that one. Think about this. Why don't you like the nice guy? Because he shows up on time. Okay. Now, he's overly available. And when he's overly available, you don't appreciate him. Because he's not a challenge. And in some stages of our lives, we need a challenge. Now, when you sitting in a rocking chair or you like you over a certain age, you ain't trying to deal with no challenge. You're going to come, you're going to be here, you're not. But think about the things you've had to work for. When you've worked for them, you've appreciated them. When you don't work for them, you don't care. It happens all the time. Mamas, 
and daddies, we buy our kids cars, right? We give the kid the car. They don't have to pay a car note or anything. They don't even have to pay insurance. What happens? They tear the car up. What do you do? Some of y'all that can tear it up again. Come back, daddy. Uh-uh. No. What happens? When they buy their own car with their own money, you better not even put your elbow on it. Don't you put your fingers on the windshield or nothing. They're going to go off. Mom, don't put your purse right there. Like, what are you talking about? No, no, no. I'm trying to hide in what they had to work for, ladies. And I know you better than a car. I know you are better than a car. People take pride in what they've had to work for. We're the same way. You, you could be a man or a woman. The bottom line is, ladies, people take pride in what they've had to work for. If you come up in somebody's life and all of a sudden they ain't got to work for nothing, don't get mad when they don't give you nothing. You know, this not having sex uh, is not about you not having fun. Not having sex some ways is keeping you from being real stupid. Oh, research is showing you that. Stupid too. You don't appreciate things you don't work for. Ladies, we know this. Guys say, oh, I'm going to walk you to class. I'm like, you walking me to class? Yeah. I'm work. I'm I said, what did he do? I said, he's too clingy. Why would you go and pay somebody's car note, uh, a grown man, he called you talking about, baby, I was just at your house and my car broke down. Okay, why you call triple A? Don't call Diddy, call triple A. Oh, my cousin died. Can you help me bury him? I don't know your cousin or your mama or, or any of them. No, you still got to figure out how you going to do it. And you sit there and say, I want to do it this way. Okay, listen, if you can't come to an agreement at the beginning, do you think it's going to get better? You stop addressing what's most important. Do you really think it's going to get better because you don't talk about it? So what? Your heart is broken. You need to tell a person, I ain't feeling this. This really made me feel this way. And um, sometimes, ladies, don't announce you. Go on, just go. Men, do the same thing because there are some women who will be cray-cray. They'll show up at your job, honey. And they'll be like, dog on, what? Why your girlfriend outside my house? We ain't together anymore. We just got kids. Oh, what had happened was, don't be bringing your woman to my house to drop off our kids because I don't know them. And she out there clowning. Listen, y'all. Maybe it ain't you. Maybe you need to share this video with somebody else. Okay? If you got it all together, that's a blessing. Share it with somebody else that doesn't. But at... As we all know, sometimes we need a refresher. You need a refresher course. And when you bump your head in one of these situations, these relationships, and you realize, dang it, I did it again. It's time for a refresher. I just had to have a refresher too. And you ain't gotta explain yourself if it's over, it's over. If you look up and the Facebook picture is gone, it's just gone. Doesn't mean the person isn't good looking anymore. It doesn't mean the person can't dance. It doesn't mean, you know, the person can't cook. It just means y'all don't click. You wanted to so badly. Oh, believe me. You wanted to so badly. But there are fundamental things, and it's beyond church, honey. There are fundamental things that are beyond church. You got to look and see can we make this last? Is it something I want to work through? Or I don't have time to work through it, honey. I'm, I'm too engaged with my own life right now. I, I, I can't afford to spend that kind of time on this type of a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's called a learning curve. See, relationships have learning curves too. Did y'all know that? I took a job one time. Hey, Joyce. I took a job. And uh, it was a learning curve for me. And I thought I could get in there and learn on this curve. But guess what? I couldn't. Because what they said they wanted and what I thought they needed, it didn't work out. 
And sometimes the problem is, isn't that you don't have it. It's just that the way the teaching is going about, it ain't for you. Because we all learn a different way. Some of us are hands-on. Some of us have to read a book. Some people have to just observe. You can learn from somebody addicted to drugs. You know what not to do. And if you listen to them, they'll say, you know what? I should have never done that. This is where I went wrong. I ain't going to listen to them. You mean to tell me you ain't going to listen to somebody who's been down that road and trying to help you not go down that road? I didn't say you got to marry them. I didn't even say they got to come home for dinner. But we need to listen. You got to be smarter. So your heart is broken. What are you going to do differently? What are you going to accept this time? How many times you can let the person apologize for the same old thing? Only you know that. You get no judgment from me, honey. I love you. You know, We don't need more judges. We need more lovers. The person that's going to love you through stupidity. The person that's going to love you, you, you know, listen, I got to give a shout out to um, Dr. Hill, uh, Dr. Evelyn Hill. Um, beautiful woman. When I met her, it was back in 2005 or so. We were neighbors and I didn't know it. And I had gone through a marriage and I ended up having a fight, which sent me to the hospital. And um, I went to have tea with her. Now she had been down to this road before. So we're sitting there and she says, listen, Dolores, I'm not gonna tell you to go and I'm not gonna tell you to stay. She says, I'm gonna tell you that you are a powerful woman and I love you. And we kept talking about life. She didn't say, tell me the details of what happened or why would you put yourself back in that situation? No, she said, you're a powerful woman. You are a beautiful woman. I'm not here to tell you what to do. If you go, I'm going to love you. And if you stay, I'm going to love you. Because see, what people want, they want to be loved. They don't want to be put to shame. So what she was giving me was the option. She was saying, sweetheart, no matter if you go to heaven or hell, I'm still going to love you. So at the end of the day, this is your choice. And I chose to go to heaven. And to this day, when I see her, I appreciate her. She has a book called Woman Under Construction. Mm -hmm. She didn't have to tell me that. She could say, oh, girl, don't you know? That's just stupid. Being called stupid ain't going to help nobody. But if I sit down and we have a conversation and I can introduce you into some strategies, to some new methodologies, to a new way, new way of thinking and handling business, now we got something going. People talk all the time, but that does not mean you're having a conversation. And it does not mean communication is happening. I got to go now because Bella looked out this window and she saw me and now she's barking here i come baby y'all have a good afternoon click tag and share the video remember so your heart was broken everybody plays the fool don't stay a fool i don't want to look on here 10 days from now and you telling me the same old same old as i say why complain about the things you can change you can change change addresses change phone numbers Definitely change your draws, y'all. Just don't keep walking around the same old dirty draws. Anyway, I don't even know where that came from. It came from my spirit or something. Anyway, love ya. Bye-bye.